All right, let's go, everyone. Welcome to the Q and A um, confirmation kind of thing that I was gonna do on the channel. Um, so, if you guys are wondering why there's been a lack of videos recently, um, I don't know if you guys have been living under a rock or not. But Grand Theft Auto Five is out. I'm waiting for this game for like three years now, so I've been playing the shit out of it. I have beaten the main story, and I'm trying to 100 percent it before the online comes out. Um, so videos might be a little bit staggered, a little bit more. Um, expect online videos when that comes out, because I'm really excited for that. And hopefully I can get some of uh, the people from the Chell community to upload videos. But that's not why we're here today. That's just a little update on videos and stuff like that. We're here to answer the questions that you guys had for me. I have about two pages and stuff, so I really don't know how long this is going to be. Um, I want to do one of these pretty much every 1,000 subscribers, all the way up to like 10,000 if I can reach that. That's a really optimistic goal. Um, so all the way up to 10,000, and then we'll do higher increments and stuff like that if we continue to go from there. Um, so I have two pages, like I said, front, um, I guess like one page front and back, and I'm going to be answering your questions that you guys asked me. So um, without further ado, let's get into it. So the first question is, what was your first NHL game? And my first NHL game, I believe, when I was like six years old, I went and see... Uh, I once saw the Detroit Red Wings play against the Montreal Canadiens, and I think Detroit won like 3-1 three, three or something like that. Um, Steve Eiserman scored two goals in that game, and it was a really, really important game, I guess. Uh, kind of really got me into hockey a lot more than what I would have normally been into that. And um, watching a Belleville Bulls preseason game, or it wasn't preseason, it was actually a like regular season when I went up to uh, Deseronto, which is on the outskirts of Toronto, to visit my aunt. Um, I watched a Belleville Bulls versus Sudbury Wolves preseason game, or season game, I guess. I don't know why I'm saying preseason. Probably because the NHL is in preseason right now. Um, but uh, those were like my first two hockey experiences of watching hockey. And aside from playing hockey as a child um, and, you know, watching it on the TV and stuff like that. Because um, my mom is a huge uh, Boston Bruins fan. Um, so she'd always have the Bruins games on and stuff like that. So, um, apart from playing it and, uh, you know, constantly, uh, playing the video games and stuff like that, NHL 98, um, my first NHL game that I went to was Detroit against, uh, Montreal and Detroit ended up winning a 3-1 when I was, like, six years old, so, um, that's something that is very, um, I hold near and dear to myself, that's why I love the Joe so much, a uh, big part of my childhood, so, yeah. Um, so the next question is, how old am I and what are my plans for the future? So I am 17 years old, uh, I turned 17, uh, this year actually, in July. And uh, my plans for the future, obviously, um, I think like everyone else is on YouTube, are more or less to uh, go off to uh, college or university and uh, get my degree while I'm there. And hopefully, um, you know, if we can potentially do YouTube full time, eventually go into that because, I mean, we all love doing it. And majority of us who I know and talk to get paid for it. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty cool thing. So being able to do that full time would be great. Um, I do plan on taking another year in high school, taking an extra year. I know in Canada we're allowed to do that in some places in the States and other parts of Canada. Well, I mean, I should say Ontario. Um, I know in like Southern Ontario where I'm from, our board allows us to take an extra year in high school. You can go back and upgrade your class marks. That way you have a better acceptance rate in the university if you need to get one of your classes up. And for me, I'm just going to go back for the sole purpose of upgrading a couple marks, probably my physics marks from this year, because I don't know if it's going to be that high. I'll probably take a crash course this year and then do it again next year and try to get it up a little bit higher, which is going to be something that uh, I'm going to be really looking forward to. So that's going to be done. And um, so I'll be doing one semester of high school again in, as an extra year. Um, and I think I might just take like two or three classes or so, um, maybe do a part-time student and uh, do that. So um, that'll be from next September to next January or so and then once my exams are done I will be done school done high school finally out of the godforsaken place I hate so much and I will be probably trying to get a working a full-time job from like February to uh, the beginning of September and so that's my plan that wise I want to go off to university or college depending on like which obviously which offers my best program uh, stay in Canada I'm not sure which one yet um, University of Windsor is right in the city where I'm from which is something that I can do. Um, also, St. Clark College is there for anybody else who's from uh, Southern Ontario or the states that know about it, like uh, in the Michigan area. Um, so the University of Windsor is an option. Western University is an option. Uh, Carleton, Ottawa, Laurier, McMaster, all those schools are options for me and stuff like that. So I am looking forward and um, looking into going into those types of schools, but that won't be again until next September or October-ish, so I still have another year to... Uh, focus on my stuff in my life here at home first and then actually focus on um, going away to school or potentially staying in Windsor. Um, I don't want to stay here. I don't think anybody does, but uh, it would be financially smart and uh, hopefully I can go away to school. Um, we'll see how that goes though. Um, I do want to be taking an engineering kind of course um, and learning how to uh, 
put up the giant wind turbines. So basically, it's a renewable energy type thing. Um, to put up the wind turbines, you make a killer amount of money off of it. Um, I know one of my aunt's budgets for one of the companies that puts them up down here. So I would have a pretty, uh, my foot in the door kind of, if I tried to get into the company with a degree. And I would be able to get out around uh, 23 years old with a degree, making about 140 k a year. Which is something that I would be really interested in doing. And it's something that I am going to go to forward to do. And that's that. Also, for plans for future-wise, um, two summers from now, I am going back to... Um, I don't know if any of you guys know what the Tim Hortons Children Foundation is, but uh, it's all a program that I am in that has been helping me out tremendously for the past five years, and they're actually going to be paying for some of my school, and it's a really hard program to get into. Um, if anybody wants to know what it is and like how you get into it, you can um, obviously you can personal message me on YouTube, and I will clarify it for you. Um, but yeah, it's basically that. Um, I will be going off and applying to be a camp counselor for um, two summers from now in Manitoba, hopefully. Do uh, the leadership program out there, which is what I'm in right now. Um, this summer coming up is, the, is my last year, f uh, my fifth year in it. Um, so it's something that is going to be really hard for me because I've uh, met some amazing people and um, learned a lot about myself throughout the time. Um, but it's going to be really cool to be able to come back and actually be a counselor throughout the summer and make money doing something that I love, which is like canoe trips out in Manitoba. Um, so that's my plans for the future, really. I'll, and aside from that, um, obviously doing YouTube um, the entire time because I love to entertain you guys and I love to give you guys a outlet um, if you guys need it when you guys come home from school or whatever. Um, I like to just entertain people, and that's why I do YouTube. So if I can do that full time, then uh, you know I'm still getting my degree and everything in case this stuff eventually gets shut down because it's not a 100% uh, guaranteed thing. Um, but if I can do YouTube full time, I will be doing it full time eventually in the future just because of how much I love doing this. And this is my, um, I guess it's my dream to be able to do this full time one day, which I guess is a little bit weird because a lot of people have like bigger dreams where they want to be millionaires and stuff like that. I would love to do YouTube full time and be able to do game walk plays and stuff like that for you guys. This is my uh, dream and it's kind of cool to say that I'm kind of like potentially living my dream on a lower scale right now. Um, my dream is obviously to be up there with the big guys like everyone else on YouTube, I think, and uh, only you guys are going to be able to make that happen for me. It's not really me, it's all uh, you viewers and stuff like that, and you guys are great so far. I mean, you guys have helped me grow so much as a channel, and I really do thank you guys all for that, and I would not be here where I am without you. But um, that's only the second question, we're seven minutes into this, so uh, that was a uh, very big uh, kind of thing with my plans for the future and stuff like that. Um, so the next question is, when is the All-Star Draft Day? I don't know. I'm going to have to talk to Deke about that. Deke and uh, Smelly Kick, but hopefully um, there's going to be another one this year. I had a really fun time doing it last year. Uh, Duels did a great job editing the montage, and I am really excited for this year's. So hopefully, you know, maybe we can get a captaincy spot, maybe draft our own team this year. Um, I don't know, but we'll have to see how things go. Um, but I will talk to Deke, and hopefully he will be putting on another one this year. It is uh, something I'm looking forward to. So next question is my favorite OHL team. Favorite OHL team is the Windsor Spitfires, just because they're my hometown team, and I've been um, I've pretty much loved the Windsor Spitfires as a team since I was uh, in elementary school when we would go to some of the games at the barn, believe it or not, which is our old arena. Now we have the WFCU arena, which is a lot nicer and a lot better. But we had the barn, and uh, actually, where the Detroit Red Wings used to play preseason games. Um, they played play it over here in Windsor, and it was pretty great. But the place is so old and ridiculous, and it just looks like a big barn, and that's why it's called the barn. Um, but I was like probably like grade three or four when I first went to my first OHL game um, for Windsor, and that was against Owen Sound, and they're my favorite OHL team by far. Uh, my biggest win in the NHL franchise was, I believe, NHL 12. I think we beat a team like 25 nothing. No, sh uh, no uh, dust off my back, dust off my shoulder, anything like that. I had some great teammates that I still play with today. Um, obviously, the guys aren't as uh, active as they were back then. Else, we'd be dominating it up. But uh, it was a very big win, and the team, <laughs> I really appreciate them for sticking through it. 25-0 uh, was a huge win for us, and uh, it was something. It's probably something that I'll remember my entire um, career playing NHL. Um, so, the next question is: Am I derping? Yes, yes, I am derping all the time. And if you're not derping, then you are wrong. Uh, my next uh, question is uh, my favorite Hawks player. And my favorite Hawks player is the player that I just recently bought a jersey of, uh, Patty Kane, or how like me and my friends like to call him, Party Kane. Uh, he's my favorite player, Patrick Kane. Um, I just love the slick hands on the guy. He's freaking amazing on so many different levels. And uh, I just love the way he plays the game and just his attitude and everything is just uh, something that I idolize, I guess. Even though it's probably not the best attitude to idolize, um, it, he is, it's one of the best attitudes that I uh, really, really, really do enjoy as an NHL player, and that's like a poster boy for, you know, a hockey player. So Patrick Kane is my favorite Hawks player. 
Um, my next question is who I think is going to win the Stanley Cup. And I know a lot of people are going to probably going to be biased about this with me saying Detroit. And uh, because they're my favorite team, and that's not the reason why I think Detroit's going to win the Stanley Cup. I don't know if you guys have seen it. And I know I understand it is preseason and everything. But um, when Detroit's playing all their stars against all the other team stars, they're destroying teams. Like the other night, Detroit beat uh, Boston 8-2. to 8-2 to two in preseason, and they beat Pittsburgh 4-1. to one. Both of them had Crosby playing and stuff like that. Um, you know, Malcolm was playing for Pittsburgh and stuff. I mean, Detroit is going to be a, a huge threat in the Eastern Conference, and I honestly think they're going to win the Stanley Cup. We added two key additions to our team, two uh, former captains of two former teams, and uh, I actually think Daniel Alfredson and both Stefan Weiss are going to be a huge um, impact on Detroit and on Hockey Town, and they're going to help Hank Zetterberg. Uh, lead the team to uh, their first ever Stanley Cup um, within the last 10 years without Nick Lidstrom being there. So it's something that I am uh, being very biased about, but I'm calling it right now. I want to say Detroit and St. Louis possibly in the Stanley Cup. I- I'm trying to think of the St. Louis's Western Conference. I believe they are. Yeah, I think St. Louis. I'm, I want to say Detroit, St. Louis in the Stanley, Conf, uh, Stanley Cup. I don't want to say Detroit wins it in six games. That's what I'm saying now before the season even starts. If that happens, somebody owes me $1,000 because that's an amazing prediction. Um, do I have a girlfriend? No, I do not. And it's something that I would like to work on, but it's at the same time, it's not really a huge concern to me. Um, if I do, uh, I guess I could potentially do videos with her in the future. She's okay with that. But uh, I don't know when that's going to happen. It's not something that is a big impact on my life and not something that I'm too worried about right now. I have another, you know, 50 years to find someone that I want to spend the rest of my life with or, you know, spend them in a little while with. So I have time for that. Not something I'm really worried about right now. There are more important things in my life. Um, so which NHL teams uh, do I like and which can I not stand? So the, I basically like NH, any every NHL team. I have my likes for every single NHL team. And, uh, you know, I like every NHL team as a whole. I like that, you know, they're all hockey teams. I can respect every single team in the NHL. You know, even if I don't like the team, um, if I don't like players on the team and such like that, like I don't like Sidney Crosby at all, which is, um, I know a lot of people are like, well, why wouldn't you like Crosby? He's the best player in the world. I just don't like Crosby personally as a player. I think for being a hockey player, he's a little bit more on the uh, softer side, even though he is an amazing player and the best player in the world. Um, I'm not a big fan of Sidney Crosby, and I will prefer Steven Stamkos any day over Crosby, but that's just my personal opinion. Stamkos is more of the traditional hockey player that I grew up watching. Sidney Crosby is more of the uh, modern-day hockey player, and I guess that's why my... uh, you know, my take on Sidney Crosby isn't the most, uh, I guess, up to date. As long as Sidney Crosby is not wearing a Red Wings jersey or Team Canada jersey, I'm not a big fan of him. The second he puts on a Red Wings jersey or Team Canada Canada jersey, Crosby is one of my favorite players, I guess. But that's a little bit biased. But I think everybody should have, um, you know, every Canadian or should at least appreciate what Sidney Crosby can do as a hockey player. And I do, um, being a player myself, I understand what Sidney Crosby does as a hockey player. And I understand he is the best player in the world. Um, I don't really dislike any teams with that being said if i had to pick one team that i dislike the most though i would say it is the boston bruins um just because they're my mom's favorite team and i like to heckle them when they uh, lose and stuff like that Um, and it goes both ways when detroit beats boston and boston beats detroit so uh but i I do respect boston as a team a lot even though a lot of team people say that they don't like boston i'm one of the people that likes hockey as a whole sport i don't just single out certain players and certain teams i like everyone for their own individual in um contributions to the league and to the sport and uh but if i had to say one team that i dislike the most um i would say the boston bruins and the teams that i do like i know i'm probably going to get a lot of shit for this my two favorite teams are detroit and chicago and a lot of people are like whoa that's a huge rivalry how can you be both a a wings fan and a hawks fan um you know it was a lot worse when we were in the same division together but now that we're kind of split up it's a little bit more um like i said jonathan Tays and patrick hannah two of my favorite players in the league um, obviously not my favorite player, but they're two of my favorite players in the league. And ever since Chicago's gotten both Patrick Kane and Jonathan Tays back in 2006 and 2007, I have liked Chicago as a team. But I will always be a Red Wings fan before that, um, just because I grew up going to games of the Joe and watching Steve Eisman, Brendan Shanahan, Nicholas Lidstrom, uh, you know, all those crazy names that Detroit had. Chris Osgood, Dan Cleary. I mean, he's more Noto Ocelli and stuff like that. Um, you know, Detroit is always going to be my favorite team, and they're they're going to be the favorite my favorite team until I die, pretty much. But I do like Chicago as well as the team, um, which is a little bit far fetched, but uh, that's something that just has to be dealt with, I guess. So, so yeah, probably going to get shit for that, but it's whatever. Um, so, what made me start YouTube? Um, so, I guess what made me start doing YouTube was um, two summers ago. I was uh, first just going on YouTube, and I ended up finding that uh, 
Uber Hacksaw Nova. Actually, you know, before Nova, there was Muzza Fuzza, and I would watch his stuff, and I was like, wow, this guy's pretty good. I didn't find this stuff entertaining. But, you know, what really made me start to actually think about doing YouTube was watching Uber Hacksaw Nova's stuff on YouTube itself. I don't know how I found any of his videos, but I probably on one of the front page that I clicked, I ended up finding it, and then I realized there's a lot of gameplay commentary on YouTube, and it is a big, growing thing. And um, I just was watching them, and I was like, well, if they can do it, why can't I do it? And it was like the understandable, like, they were also like 20 years old at the time. I'm only 15, I'm only 14, 15 years old. Um, I still have a long way to go. I mean, these guys have been doing it for four years. Why don't I get into it now and start myself off for something that could potentially be more in the future? Um, I wanted to help people and, you know, be able to be that positive support that anybody can go to to watch, you know, take your... Um, take your mind off of things because I, I do I do have family problems um, you know stuff that every family has but I think mine's a little bit like more up there obviously something I'm not going to go into because it's a little bit more personal but um, you know I have had my share, fair share of problems growing up as a kid and stuff like that and I do understand the problem or the, what kids need um, they need an outlet in order to uh, you know take their mind off of things that are going on at home or going on at school and uh, when I started watching YouTube I was having some problems obviously and it was a very good outlet for me to take my mind off of how things were happening so um, when I was able to fix off that problem I was able to uh, come to the consensus that uh, if those guys can do it and do what they did for me why can't I do that for someone else and uh, YouTube is something that has been growing I've been doing it for almost about a year now and uh, it's something that I am very very happy I started to do so that's how I got started in YouTube the fact is that uh, a big well if they can do it why can't I do it and why can't I do it great uh, was the reason I got started on YouTube so um, I guess like everybody has their own ways um, I think it's pretty much like a generic response but mine is more for uh, to give back to the community that has done so much to me and to be able to provide my own source of entertainment for people and outlets to, for them to uh, be able to uh, not have to worry about things for once because I really wish I had that as a kid and I didn't so um, kids who's now out uh, kids nowadays that have that be really thankful because uh, I didn't have that as a kid and it would have been a lot better and a lot easier if I did but uh, next question um, comes from Don't Be Sad, who's one of my friends. Uh, so Lucas asks, if I had to fuck one, marry one, and kill one between Clappy Deke and Duels, who would it be? And uh, this is a serious question that I had to think of a lot. Um, you know, I'm marrying Deke. I, I got to marry Deke. He's done a lot for me. And uh, marrying Deke, um, you know, I think I'd have to... Uh, it's a tough question. Do I have sex with Clappy or do I have sex with Duels now? You know, I already get to have sex with Deke on a daily basis, but do I have sex with Clappy or do I have sex with Duels? You know, I've spoken to Clappy to once or twice, and he, fem he seems like he could be a, a fiend in the sack. And, uh, you know, Duels seems a little bit passive, but I also don't want to kill Duels. But I don't want to kill Clappy either. But I think I'm going to have to have sex with Clappy and kill Duels. So I'm marrying Deke, having sex with Clappy, and killing Duels. Duels, sorry about it, but, um, you know, I just I feel Clap would be better in the sack anyways. And uh, that just got weird. Welcome to the weird part of YouTube. I'm your host. Uh, next question is my favorite non-NHL game. And this is an easy, easy, easy answer for me. Follow 3 um, is my favorite game of all time. <laughs> I basically have every achievement in that game. And I'm going back and doing it again on the computer, but counting it on my Xbox. It is my favorite game to play. Hands down, easy. Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas, Fallout 1, um, Fallout 2, Fallout Tactics, Fallout Brotherhood. Oh, God. Any single Fallout game that they make. I am instantly in love with it, and the Fallout series by Bethesda is just m my favorite game series, aside from NHL. Easy, hands down, any day of the week you ask me that question, I will answer it the same way. And that's simply it. Alright, so next question is my favorite breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, I really don't eat breakfast that much, but honestly, like whenever I go out for breakfast at like a restaurant, I always get like a steak and eggs and stuff like that, which is really weird because a steak for breakfast is like, why are you eating a steak? Why the hell would you not want a steak for breakfast? Like, come on, that's a serious question. It's steak. Obviously, you want it for breakfast. So, I'm going to go with steak. Uh, steak breakfast for breakfast. Um, for lunch, peanut butter and jelly sandwich, which is really, really, really weird. No one understands that. I just love peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. I don't know what it is about them. You know, the classic, uh, amazing taste that they are. Love peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. They're my favorite lunch to have, which is weird, but that's that. And, uh, yeah, my favorite dinner is any kind of pasta and stuff like that. I do eat a lot, so I do get tired of it, and I try to eat out differently. So, like, every, every other Monday I go for... Uh, they have an all-you-can-eat wings place here in uh, Windsor, and um, me and a bunch of my guy friends, uh, my boys, we go out and we get all-you-can-eat wings, and I went today, actually, and I just recently got back at about 9.30, 10 o'clock-ish, and I ate about 50 wings tonight. So, uh, you know, um, I, I would say any kind of, like, Italian kind of cuisine, you know, reminding me of my, uh, my grandmother's cooking and stuff like that. 
um, which is something that I do like a lot to enjoy, but it does get very tiring quickly. Um, so those are my favorite, I guess, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, I would have to say. Uh, next question is my favorite music slash genre slash band, and this changes throughout the year um, as everything kind of fades in and fades out. Um, you know, I'm not the kind of person that listens to one kind of music, and I don't kind of like, just only like the one kind of music. I like music as a whole, and I really do appreciate it. Um, in the summer months, like uh, the end of June, July, and August, I listen to mostly country music, and my favorite country artists are like Luke Bryan, really like Luke Bryan, uh, Blake Shelson, uh, Toby Keith, uh, Tim McGraw. I really love country music in the summertime. I think it's the best stuff to listen to. Dirk Bentley. Um, one of my favorite stuff, but also um, really a big impact on my life because that's what kind of like I grew up in the county. Um, so, you know, the country music is stuff that I'm like kind of like sort of used to. So um, that's something that I do enjoy in the summertime, um, usually more around wintertime and uh, fall. I uh, Well, this is all going on. I do listen to this all throughout the year. I really do enjoy uh, EDM music with Avicii and Nicky Romero. Um, all, uh, there goes my phone going off on the new iOS 7 update. Um, but I really do like EDM, which is electronic dance music. Um, VG probably is my favorite artist to spin by because I think his stuff is just nuts, and uh, I've loved him ever since I ever heard. I've heard Levels for the first time in the dressing room at the arena. Um, so Avicii is my favorite EDM artist. I'm also really into like alternative music, um, kind of like alternative like punk rock back from when I was growing up as a kid. So like Simple Plan, Sum 41, uh, Blink 182, Paramore, Fall Out Boy, Panic at the Disco, all the good stuff from like when I was growing up as a kid back in like 2002 to 2006. Um, you know, just basically, this is why I kind of wish, wish I went to high school back then, because that was like the popular music back then. That's the stuff I love. I love listening to old crappy ass punk music from those areas. Um, it's just some of my favorite music to listen to. Um, so, um, aside from that, I do, I kind of like hip hop and rap music. My favorite artist being Eminem and Macklemore. Um, I just think that they have the two biggest, most contributing uh, factors behind them. I'm also really into Frank Ocean and uh, Kanye West and Jay-Z a little bit, um, but those are more, you know, s subsided a little bit, not as much as before. Um, but, you know, I'm all across music. I do not just have one uh, sp specific kind of music that I enjoy listening to. So my favorite person I, uh, I've i met on YouTube so far, that was the question that uh, was below it. Favorite person I've met on YouTube or from YouTube would have to be my good friend Joe. Um, I reached out to him last year asking him if I wanted to do a uh, dual comment in NHL, and he was the only one that responded to me. Um, I reached out to a couple of people who were around my size, and uh, I've honestly said I've made a good friend in Joe, and uh, it's a good thing to see him grow, and it's, I'm glad to see that uh, you know we're both doing it together. Um, you know, We're helping each other out, and it's something that I am very proud to be able to have him as a friend that I've made, and it's a very good for me also because uh he's one of the only, one of the only friends i've made actually i think he is the only friend i made on youtube that doesn't quit within like two months of me making friends with him so um joe is probably my favorite person i've met on youtube at this point just for that i've met a bunch of amazing people and uh you know they're all gonna have a huge impact on my life but i have uh, probably talked the most about joe with anything and i think joe is gonna be one of those friends that i'm gonna have for as long as we both do youtube and potentially hopefully for life so uh, Joe is probably my favorite person that I've met on YouTube so far. Um, so if I could meet any YouTuber, which is what I thought the first question was, who would it be and why? And I don't know if you guys watch any uh, LP stuff, but my favorite, favorite, favorite YouTuber on the history of the planet is SSOHPKC or Seamus O'Doherty, as people call him. Um, he was the kind of person that I would go to and watch all of his videos just to basically relieve myself. You know, I find myself having the same sense of humor, so I find his videos very humorous with the statistically sarcastic sense of humor that we both share. Um, on top of that, I also uh, really sympathize with the guy um, on uh, tracks of like his high school like uh, career and stuff like that and what happened. I can kind of relate to it um, with what happened to him in high school and what's happening to me in high school and stuff like that. And uh, I just feel the biggest personal connection with Seamus than I do over anyone else. And if I could get the chance to meet um, any YouTuber or do any kind of dual com with any YouTuber, um, YouTuber SSOHPKC would be my pick hands down any day. He's my favorite YouTuber and always will be. Um, he's probably the biggest inspiration that I've had to start YouTube. Uh, so next question is, name 10 rookies I think are going to have a great season um, in the NHL. I honestly couldn't name 10 rookies that are going to have a great season because I don't, like I follow the rookies, but I don't follow them as much as I do like team overall and building and stuff like that. 
Um, I obviously think Jonathan Drew and Nate McKinnon, uh, Seth Jones, I think they're all going to have amazing seasons in the NHL. I would say Anthony Mantha, but I'm pretty sure that he's still playing another year in the CHL. I'm um, not 100% sure if he is or not. I would say Danny DeKaiser and, like, Gustav Nyquist. I don't know if that would count as their, like, I don't know if, like, this would count as, like, their rookie season because they played last year, but they were in the playoffs and they didn't play all season. Um, I know Detroit has a couple good rookies like Tatar, um, Thomas Tatar, Gustav Nyquist, obviously, and um, Danny DeKaiser that I think are all going to have amazing seasons. Kind of sad to see Damian Brunner go, but... Uh, you know, you got to do what you got to do. I guess he didn't want to re-sign with us, but that was the biggest mistake of your career, buddy, because we're going to win a Stanley Cup this year. Um, but, yeah, I, I can't really name 10 rookies that I think are going to have an amazing season, amazing breakout season this year. Um, I would say, like, the top three, top four picks, though, um, in Nate McKinnon, Jonathan Druin, Seth Jones, and the, uh, oh, God, I can't remember the guy's name from Florida. Y you guys know who I'm talking about. I think, you know, those four are pretty much shooing picks that are going to have a good season. And, yeah, so that's who I think will have a great season this year. Um, so my favorite player in the NHL, um, I'm going to say current and uh, retired players. So my favorite retired player is Joe Sackick. Um, obviously a class act guy. I really enjoyed watching Joe Sackick play when I had the chance to watch him play. And, um, you know, family is friends with Joe Sackick. So uh, that's kind of the, influ the influence that I had with Joe Sackick from before. And uh, my favorite current player is a uh, fellow Swedish member, uh, Eric Carlson, the defenseman of the Ottawa Senators. We both play the same position, and, uh, you know, we're both, like, the same height. We both kind of look similar. Um, I just I just really like Eric Carlson. Guy's a complete beauty, class act on and off the ice. Um, one, my favorite player, hands down. I can't wait to get my hands on a Carlson alternate Ottawa jersey and then uh, hopefully get my hands on a Carlson Sweden jersey from this year. Um, so he's my favorite player. Uh, next question is what I do outside of YouTube. Um, you know, I'm a standard teenager pretty much. I do the same stuff that anybody else does. I'm a normal person. I uh, hang out with my boys all the time. I go to work. I do homework. I go to school. Uh, it's not really a reluctant life. Like, I don't have, like, that Hollywood Hills life that you expect, like, from the Jenners or anything like that. Um, I, you know, we're, we're low-class, low-income family. Um, and I, uh, I just do what any what a normal teenager does, I guess. Like you could say, like I go, out, I go out with my friends on weekends. I go to parties and stuff like that. Not, not so much because I'm not really into that. But I do go to parties. You know, I take, I partake in most of the stuff that goes on there. Um, but that's just, I mean, like it's just mostly what a teenager does. I'm your typical teenager that uh, also has a decent internet following on YouTube that does NHL videos. So. Um, yeah, I go to work, I do my homework, I hang out with my friends, and then I play Xbox. And <laughs> that's pretty much uh, my life. I uh, talk to females, and I do what I do. Um, basically, anything that you think of that would go on in high school, I'd probably have done it, or have taken part, or have been around it. Um, so I'm pretty much your average kid. Um, just as much as anybody else on YouTube that is doing this around my age. So pretty much all your average teenagers, that's what you think. Um, everyone always gives YouTubers this, like, false hype and stuff like that, putting them... I guess, you can, I, mean, I guess you can kind of say we're sort of like celebrities on the internet. Um, like, I mean, I'm not anywhere close to it, but I just generalize this all as a whole because I understand that we're all individual people. But, uh, I mean, that's just the way I look at it. Um, you know, just because a person has like a million subs and stuff like that. They, they're, sure, they're famous on YouTube, but uh, just like them and like celebrities in real life, we're all just normal people and we all just live a random, uh, normal life. And we all just do what we do to survive every day, and that's just how it is. So, uh, um, what I do outside of YouTube is pretty much the same stuff, and uh, yeah, so that's it. <laughs> yes, I'm just your normal kid. Um, not really anything too special. Um, next question is um, my channel name, and this is the last question because the last question I've written down is pretty much like a repeat and stuff like that. Um, so my channel name, the meaning behind my channel name, and the meaning behind my channel name is just a childhood nickname I picked up when I was about uh, eight or nine playing um, baseball, actually. I picked it up playing baseball and carried it into hockey um, with my personality and stuff like that. Um, it was, I'm, I'm a catcher for baseball, if you guys who don't know that. Um, so I would be behind the plate most of the time, and I would basically chirp the batters as a young kid and try to, like, psych them out of their uh, mental state while they were in the bat because everybody has their own mojo that, would, that they would get into when they got up to it. And I played travel ball. So um, the guys were pretty good. They were good hitters, and it was my job that my coach told me it was my job to go out there and try to psych the players out and hopefully get them to uh, get out of their mindset. So that's where, I guess, psychs comes in. The entire the real thing, Sykes was just taken. And uh, that's, I mean, that's what my coach ended up calling me. He was Sykes. And same thing with hockey. It transferred into hockey. You know, I played defense, but I was, uh, 
a tough guy, I guess you could say, enforcer type thing. You know, I'd chirp kids, basically, uh, Steve Otto on the ice, just try to get in people's heads and stuff. And I do that with any sport I play, really. I just try to get in people's heads, you know, do all the trash talking. So try to psych them out, get them out of their mental game and stuff like that. And do what I can to better my team, uh, I guess, uh, the dirtiest way possible without being actually dirty. So uh, that's where that comes from. Um, and I guess a lot of the, I guess the real thing actually kind of plays in now because there's another channel out there that's called Real Psychs. Um, which is a little bit weird if you ask me, but um, I mean, I've talked to the guy and cleared everything up with him. He does Call of Duty stuff. I do NHL stuff. I had my channel before he did, and uh, that's it. So the real thing kind of comes into play now. Um, before, it wasn't really anything too major, um, and everybody would I always ask me, are you the real one? And I would say, well, the, the Sykes was just taken, so the real was something that I just put in front of it. And now if somebody asks me if I'm the real one, I can say yes, because there's actually an account, another like channel that is called Real Sykes, and it's the same thing, but it's a different name, and it's, yeah. But, uh, yeah, those are the questions. Those are what you guys asked. I hope you guys got your answers for them. This is a longer video than what I thought. I didn't realize it was going to take half an hour to answer all your questions. But it's something I'm completely okay with. Um, I will be doing another one of these if I do reach 2,000 subscribers. I mean, you guys are killing it with the support on the channel and uh, helping me grow as a channel. And I'm really, 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 really appreciative of that. Like, you guys don't understand. So, uh, you guys are amazing. Um, so hopefully when we get to 2,000 subscribers, I will be able to do another one, and hopefully I'll be able to do it in another month or so, get the audience bigger, and um, I'll probably just go over the same questions that I answered in this one, and answer any new questions and stuff that uh, arises, and if it's any like common questions that I constantly get, I'll probably make note of it and uh, address it in the future, but I uh, just want to thank everyone who sent, it, who sent in a question. And uh, I was able to answer it. Thank you for giving me your time. And hopefully you guys are able to find out a little bit more about me as a person and find out a little bit more behind the man, behind the microphone. Um, thing about face cams, though, not doing all that stuff yet. So uh, wait for that in the future. It'll eventually come. But, uh, yeah, no face cams. But, uh, yeah, thanks, thanks for watching, everyone. Um, if you're here to this point listening, uh, I appreciate it. And uh, until next time, take care.